Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so funny. I meant to go right at like, it's actually 1245 my time. And I was so into dancing to my playlist that I didn't even realize what time it was. <laughs> so I was like, ah, shit. So I'm here. Um, starting a little bit early. So I mean, technically, I'm not even late. But um, I wanted to start early today. Te like on your guys' schedule, it says 12 o'clock. Um, I'm sorry, 11 o'clock, right? 12, 12 o'clock. These time zones and changes are fucking me up if I'm yeah, you know, being honest here, because I'm on mountain time, but everything that I set, like whenever I do these things, I always put Pacific time and Easter time because that's like such a common general time zone. And I'm like, it's really messing me up. Um, so right now it's 1248 and Pacific time, it's 1148. So anyways, um, I started, I wanted to start early because I want to have James come on right at 12. Um, Harriet has something. So she has to, she only has a 30 minute window with us. So we do have to start her at 1230. So we are in a time crunch. Um, however, there is going to be your promised bonus training about getting work for the holidays. So I'm going to start with some just like announcements. I'm going to announce the winner and a couple other things before we bring James on at 12. Um, and just say some, some, you know, last words because this is the official last day. Now, just so you guys know, the replays will be available for the next week. Once that week goes by, um, essentially this particular, uh, Facebook group will go away and so make sure if you've made friends <laughs> that you connect with them, that you stay in touch with them and everything like that, exchange information. Um, we promote community and that's like one of the things that we love to do. That's why I do what I do is because bringing the like-minded makeup artists into a group and community is like, seriously, it's a really powerful thing to do. So make sure you connect with one another. This, all of these, um, replays will be available for the next week, um, and then, yes, like I was saying, stay after the two guest speakers because you will be receiving that holiday, um, getting booked for the holidays bonus. And it's going to be pretty quick, but very powerful at the same time. So before we bring James on, I want to announce the winner from last night's challenge. So without further ado, I'm going to let me just make sure that I have. Oh, where is it? Um, I want to make sure that I have her last name correct before I say this. Um, I'm really excited. So the last, last night's challenge yesterday was taking all about taking action. Right. And so last night's challenge were, was for you guys to put out on social media, in the public, in all of whatever you're going to be posting on, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, um, that you're available and able to work. And it was so fun. I, I know it can be intimidating. <laughs> it can definitely be intimidating, but trust me when I say it works, it works. And there's nothing wrong with sharing pe with people and your community and your followers that you're available for work. Um, it just, it's a constant reminder that you are a working makeup artist and right now you are available and nobody knows that until you kind of spell it out for them. So doing this, trust me when I say, I'm so excited to hear and see what, um, is this? Yeah. Okay. To see what comes of what you guys just did. So I'm so proud of all of you that went out, took action and put that out there, put your schedule out there. Let me just hold on. I'm just trying to get this all situated to announce who that winner is. All right, we've got it. Okay. Our winner for last night's day three challenge is Richa Chug. Chug. I don't know exactly how to say the last name. Um, but congratulations, Richa. She joined us all the way from India, and I am so proud of her. She has been sticking through it <laughs> every single day watching the replays because I know that the time difference is pretty significant. So congratulations, Richa. I'm excited to share with you guys or to share with you that the prize for day three is 21 days of Reiki with me. So remember what I was saying about the inner circle, how right now in the inner circle membership, the members are doing a group Reiki, uh, 21 day Reiki, um, like session. It's not a session, but like 21 days of Reiki. So 
Reiki is amazing. When you do one-on-one -on -one Reiki and you receive it, whether it's in person or distant, it's amazing. But having something like a distant 21 days of Reiki is amazing. And when you receive it one-on-one, -on -one, it is the most powerful experience ever. So Richa, I'm going to make sure that I um, connect with you separately and we'll talk about how we're going to conduct that. You're going to be receiving 21 days of Reiki from me. So congratulations, Risha. And also cheers to you for showing up every single day on such a completely different time zone. Like amazing. I love it. Okay. So, um, for the next just minute or two, I'm just going to express some gratitude. I am a huge advocate of expressing gratitude. It's like, um, if you guys have ever heard of The Secret, The Secret was, I forget exactly the name of the, the woman who created it. There's a lot of like uh, people that kind of like pitched in for The Secret. There's a bunch of people on that documentary and in that book. But the author of the book, I think her name is Dorothy or something like that. She also created another book called The Magic. And a spoiler alert, it's not really a spoiler alert. The Magic is gratitude. And the book is actually, I think it's 30 days or 21 days, I forget which one, of expressing gratitude in like a really powerful way. And first of all, I want to express my gratitude to you guys by just saying thank you so much for being in this space. Thank you for signing up and participating. And thank you for showing up for yourself most, like first and foremost. Um, and I want to remind you guys that when you express gratitude on a daily basis, Everything that we did the past three days, the mindset work, the marketing hacks that I shared with you guys, the taking action, when you express gratitude, it amplifies your energy on a, like a really big, big level. And so magical things happen, hence the book called The Magic, when you express gratitude and get creative with it. You know, it's definitely really powerful when you express your gratitude in the morning, you know expressing three things, five things, 10 things you're grateful for in the morning and then before you go to bed. But throughout the day, like what I like to do is it's it's a beautiful day today in Denver. And I was I was actually going out to my car to get my hat because I had accidentally left it in there. And I was like, wow, what a beautiful day. Like, I'm so grateful for this. And right before I got on here, I was like, wow, like I'm in such like amazing energy and amazing space with all of you incredible human beings. Like, I'm so grateful for that. Like, thank you universe for gifting me with all these beautiful human beings. Um, and so and it can be anything like, you know, feeling gratitude that you have a roof over your head, feeling gratitude for um, the fact that you can say you're a makeup artist. Like that's a huge thing to be grateful for, regardless of where you're at in your career. Um, not very many people can say that. Some people don't always um, take that, that leap of faith and do makeup. Some people just kind of, kind of push it to the side and like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, whatever. Like I'll, 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 it just is what it is. Like it's not anything I can do. And then they like don't pursue their dreams. Right. So feel gratitude that you are a makeup artist, that you made that decision. Um, so gratitude is everything, everything we went over with all the energy work, mindset work, when you place gratitude on top of it, uh, it's not only like tying the bow, but it also, it just amplifies your energy on such a cellular level that we can't even really comprehend it. People don't even really like scientists can't even like really they're like, wait, where is this? Okay. But it's actually just amplifying your energy field. And remember what I was talking about, the levels of frequency, you're taking yourself from wherever you're at now and your frequency and your energy levels to as close as you possibly can get to that frequency of love. Gratitude is as close as you can get to the frequency of love. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so hello, hello. I see everybody in the chat. Hi, Jasmine. Um, can't see everybody. There's a couple people that just uh, just are as Facebook users, but hello. Um, <laughs> Rhonda Byrne. Jasmine says it's Rhonda Byrne. I could, okay, totally wrong. Her name's not even close. It's not, it's not Dorothy. It's Rhonda. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so uh, somebody says, sorry, watching this muted auto caption. No worries. Hi. It's Great to have you uh, here at 6 a.m. where you are at. Thank you for being here. Okay, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give the grand uh, introduction to bring on our guest, James Vincent. You guys, before I bring him on, I, oof, I'm already going to get like emotional here. <sighs> okay, just got to get a second. He is an incredible human being. 
to say the least. Um, whew, you guys, I've never got like got this emotional before. Um, gotta take a moment. <laughs> okay. He actually, so just so you guys know, and I'm sure you guys, you already know this about James. He is one of those types of makeup artists that you can reach out to when you need a little guidance, when you need a little pep in your step, inspiration, motivation. He is a force to be reckoned with. And when March 13th, 2020 hit, I went in complete shock, like complete shock. Like I thought that everything, like my entire world was crumbling. Um, I was so busy with my freelance stuff and everything was going so well. And I was on my way to getting in the union and all these like big grand things. I was making a lot of money, all that stuff, like everything I was calling in for. And then March 13th hit, I'll never forget it. I was, I was like getting ready to go to the gym. And then all the announcements came around. Everybody is going in lockdown. Uh, all the productions shut down in LA. Uh, at that time, New York, uh, New York City had already been pretty much shut down. And I was getting ready to go to the gym. And my boyfriend was like, let's just go to the gym. Get this off your mind. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like, we'll, we'll get through this. And I go to the gym. And I couldn't even I couldn't even go on the elliptical as like, you know, easy and just like stress free as an elliptical elliptical is. I couldn't like I was just in such shock. And after I got home, I reached out to James and I was like, what is going to happen? Like, and I, I'll never forget, he put me at complete ease and was just like, babe, it's going to be fine. You know, these things happen and we're going to get through it. Just push through it. And I give so much credit to James because I reached out to him a few times during the lockdowns and ever since then. And he's been nothing but an incredible support system to help keep that that energy, that motivation and inspiration up when at such a crazy and scary time um, that like, I'm so incredibly uh, eternally grateful for him. <laughs> yes, we love James. We love James. So James is uh, the creator of the makeup show. So you guys, I'm sure are very much uh, aware of that. He also has, he's a, a co-owner of Rebels and Outlaws. I am so obsessed with that line. He has some incredible things. We're going to talk about that when we bring him up. And so without further ado, I'm so excited to bring James into our space. So I'm going to go and bring him up. Hello, James. <laughs> Hello. And I know it's, uh, for some reason this happened. There you go. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> My light's a little weird, but we're just going to go. With it. I've got some shades and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I went from being in a New York apartment with no light to being surrounded by windows. <laughs> so I'm in New England right now. So at this time of day, everything looks a little crazy. The light <laughs> is going. <laughs> well, you look great. Thanks. It's my B3 uh, <laughs> and a little bit of lime life right here. Love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being here, James. Everybody is so excited to, to have you. Um, so to get started, I feel like majority of us know your story. But for those of you that might not, if you want to just briefly. A little eyeliner. There you go. <laughs> it's been a lot. I, I've been on since like 8 a.m. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. I'm so excited. Um, it, it's it's a tr it truly is an honor, you know. I really just appreciate your asking me. Yes, yes. So, for those of you that may not know James's story, I'm going to have James just briefly share with us um, how you got into the makeup industry, mm -hmm. and feel free to like take us on the journey of how the makeup show came about, and um, maybe in a little bit we'll get into the rebels and outlaws. But let's start with with your makeup journey and and how. You got how, long, how long am I here? 30 minutes? <laughs> Three, hours? Three hours? You know, if I'm talking about myself, it can take a, <laughs> a minute. Um, you, know, it, you know, I uh, I do want to just correct one thing first. I am not the creator of the makeup show. I, Michael okay. Gavellis and Shelly Tukar created the show. I've been overseeing the education since the okay. beginning. But you know I like to give credit where credit's due. So for me, um, I say I'm an accidental makeup artist. I didn't even know that makeup was a job, you know, and it sounds so crazy in this age of reality TV and real housewives and, you know, everybody's sharing so much of themselves, but no one 
really spoke about makeup when I was young. Um, I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island. It is Rhode Island is the smallest of the 50 states. Nothing happens there. Uh, it's a really cool, creative place, but it's it for me growing up with not very much. Um, I didn't think I had a lot of options in my life, and so I never thought. You know, I knew there was makeup for TV and film, but the thought that someone like me would ever be able to do anything like that seemed impossible. Um, I was obsessed with music and album covers and music videos. I was I was a very shy and quiet kid. I was totally like the weird one sitting by myself in the cafeteria drawing and listening to punk rock music. But the, uh, the makeup always fascinated me. So I was a club kid and, and I did like haunted houses and stuff like that. But I thought that my career would be social work. My mom was very involved in the community and very involved in the church. And she was a single mom with four boys. And she always found time for other people that were less fortunate. You know, the community was always more important than the individual. And that really spoke to me. And so I went to school for social work. And <clears throat> I, you know, my parents are, are blue collar. My mom worked for the same company for 45 years. My dad worked for the same company for 50 years. And for many people, if you grow up in, I always say in one of those, I grew up in a really large, loud Catholic family. But if you grow up in those kind of large families or immigrant families, sometimes you know, you don't really, I never imagined that I could dream about what I was going to do with my life. I just thought I would have to get a job and work. And so I decided to study social work. And I was working primarily in pediatric HIV and women's health and women's issues. And <clears throat> I hated being a social worker. I loved my clients. I loved the people. But there was something very heartbreaking about working every day with people who truly need something. And you can't necessarily get it for them. But I thought, this is my life now. Like, I can't complain. You know, I'm very lucky to have a job. That's just what it is. And then one day a woman came in and spoke to my class. And she was a neat erotic who created the body shop, skin and hair care. She was hiring people to start camps for children with HIV. And she hired me. And it was kind of like for the first time in my life, out of hundreds of people, she chose me. And that was maybe one of the first times that I felt like, okay, maybe I, there's something that I have to offer. And then I decided to get my master's degree uh, moved to Atlanta, and no one in my family had ever been on a plane. No one in my family had ever left the state. But I knew that this was opportunity, and I knew that I had to take it. And while I was in school, I decided that my thesis would be on women of color in the white beauty myth, because for me growing up in a mixed family in the 90s, I, I really didn't see us anywhere. You know, there was no size, there was no shape, there was no color. And so I became very interested in why a the beauty industry that is supposed to make people feel better was leaving so many people out of the conversation. And uh, because of that paper, I got hired to be a part of the team that launched MAC Cosmetics in the southern part of the U.S. So when I started with MAC, I think there were two, two or three stores in the country. And uh, that was it. And I was still in school and I became a trainer for MAC. And I called my mom one day and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to get my master's degree. And she was like, what are you going to do? <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to be a makeup artist. And <laughs> yeah, and she was like, you know, I'm from Rhode Island, which is that heavy acting. She was like, makeup artist, I never heard of it. Is it a job? And Aww. I was like, I don't really know because nobody was a makeup artist then, you know. And, uh, and now it's been 26-ish years I've been mm -hmm. working. Artist. I love it's it. Story, but that's... Yeah, that's the story. I love it. You're such a trailblazer. I am, gosh, I actually, just side note, um, Anita, how do you say your last name? Red, Red? Anita Roddick. Yes. She, yeah. um, remember when the body shop had their at home stuff? I That's my first yeah, dabbling. About it. Mm -hmm. That was my first dabbling. So I'm definitely a big fan of Anita. So I did not know that about that you worked with her. For some reason, I've never... I've never picked that up that you've you've mentioned that before. Yeah. Um, so James has done some amazing things, you guys, and he continues to just give us so much value and inspiration and education. And so um, 
really quick, I would love for you to chat about your transition from being a working makeup artist. I mean, you still are a working makeup artist, but I'm saying like a full-time working freelance artist to what you're doing now where you're primarily um, in the education space. And I know that's what you're most passionate about. So what did that transition look like for you? I mean, it, you know, the thing is, the tough thing that I deal with in, in mentoring other artists and in, in talking to other artists is the careers of the artists of my generation kind of can't exist anymore because the world has changed. When I moved to New York, there were a hundred working makeup artists. You know, we, the Mac of the nineties, the people that came out of that kind of time, we were doing something that kind of hadn't been there before. When, when my mentors started, you know, I, I assisted Kevin Aquan for, a few years when he started, there were eight makeup artists in New York City. And that's a really crazy thing to think about. So I think that when I started doing makeup, things were very set. You know, you kind of assisted and then you became, when you, the pure person you were assisting said you were ready, you kind of went to the agency. The first Tuesday of every month, you would bring your book around to different agencies and try and get different work. It was just a, it was before cell phones, you know, so it was this very active career, but we knew what we had to do to kind of move up. And then everything started to shift. And I just felt like I, I remember being on a, a set one day, you know, and I was doing a lot of celebrity stuff, a lot of fashion stuff, a lot of music videos, um, you know, it, it, I had always, that was my world. That was my pursuit. I wanted to be in fashion. And then I remember waking up one day and I was shooting with a very famous photographer and he was very inappropriate with a very young model. And I spoke out against it. And my agent at the time said, you know, you need to keep your mouth shut. You won't never work. And I was like, I I'm sorry, this is like disgusting. And mm -hmm. um, and that's when I just started to say, you know what? We are such individual, isolated artists that uh, no one even spoke. Artists were competitive. They didn't share ideas or information or, you know, anything like that. And so I became very excited about the idea of community. Like how can we kind of bring community in? And then Michael Develis had started the powder group at the time. And uh, he asked me to come in and talk about marketing. I, I had my own makeup brand at, at the time. And uh, so I went in and I just started to see like community is how we're gonna carry this forward. Education is how we're gonna carry this forward. And so my agents at the time and all of my friends said, you can't teach, like people who can't do it, teach it. You know, that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing. And then I saw Danny Sands uh, speak in Paris and it just opened up, you know, Danny Sands is the creator of Makeup Forever. She, education was such a huge part of the brand when Danny was there. And uh, it was kind of my permission. And so I started working with the powder group, working with the makeup show. Um, and I don't own either of those things. I'm a consultant. Uh, and then brands started to hire me because many brands didn't have training departments. They didn't have um, anything kind of in place to kind of keep artists moving forward. And so in the last 20 something years, you know, I've been on five continents for Makeup Forever. I trained Smashbox as international artists. I helped choose the Sephora team. I interviewed over 2,800 makeup artists to, wow. to build the Fenty team for Rihanna. Um, you know, so I think like my career kind of changed, even though I'm still shooting and things like that, I see a bigger picture in what is possible. And I am not, you know, if I'm on set, I don't, I, I don't want my legacy to be a magazine cover or a music video. You know, someone can, it, people come to me and they say, oh, you did Amy Winehouse or this Lady Gaga video or Yes, I did 10 years ago, but what I want to do now is amplify young talent and decolonize beauty and keep 
moving forward with inclusion and have tough conversations and give makeup artists opportunity and access as well as education. And so, yes, makeup is still how I make the most of my money is with photo shoots and, and things like that. But my passion is definitely building artists to help them become the artists they want to be. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you definitely are doing that. You're accomplishing that in a very big way. I love it. And um, so as far as how Rebels and Outlaws came about, I know that you are very much big in the manifesting rituals and, yes. you know, all of the energy work and um, crystals and candles and everything like that, candle rituals. And so how and when did Rebels and Outlaws come about? Um, you know, I, I say it, it came about pretty quickly, but it was decades in the making. Um, candles had always been a part of kind of my creativity, my family. It was just, you know, I grew up in a very Italian, very Catholic kind of family. And so candles were just everywhere. I was an altar boy. I was the president of my state's Catholic youth organization. I worked for the Diocese of Providence as a social worker. So like the idea of candles and, and spirituality and acts of service, you know, were very important to me. And rebels had kind of always been there. I've always made candles for my clients. I've always kind of brought crystals to set and curated uh, the thing. I've always made toners myself because I, I really love toners and I like them to be very straightforward and simple. And what had what happened really was we were on the Fenty project. Um, Jeremy, my husband, and I were both doing. Oh, you got muted. <laughs> I sent a few other people, and uh, we were all over the world. We interviewed twenty eight hundred artists. I was bringing all of these products to different people to try, and then they had offered me a position, or they wanted me to consider some some different things, and. Uh, and I had a few offers on the table from different brands at that time, and they were all big money opportunities uh, and big title opportunities. And coming from a, a family of meager means, it would have been very, you know, it, it was a motivator. And so Jeremy said, what are you going to do? And so I said, well, let me let me go on a retreat. And so I went to Provincetown. I led the powder group's evolution week with Michael DeVellis. And at the end of it, I came back and Jeremy was like, are we taking the job? Are we moving? Are we? And I said, you know what? I, I want to make ca my candles. Um, I felt like so many artists at that time were feeling depleted. I felt like for myself, I was leaving the best of myself with my clients and coming home exhausted and not able to be there for my friends and family. And I thought, um, a lot of my ritual and, and ceremony and kind of tools that I used as a social worker, as well as an artist and creative could kind of come together and hopefully offer other artists a way to move forward. You know, mm -hmm. like for me, I'm not one of those people who believes like you have a headache and you put a crystal against your head and it cures it. I think that as artists and creatives, sometimes we can get caught up in the things that are going on. And sometimes we need something to, a talisman or something to kind of make, make it tangible so that we can very consciously say, okay, this morning I'm focusing on gratitude or on my physical wellness. I have to today make sure that I'm drinking this water, whatever it is, you know? But I think as artists, sometimes we're so up here that things like a candle or pulling a card or a, a gratitude journal can take the esoteric or the theoretic and make it more actual and tangible, you know? Mm -hmm. I love that. And first of all, your candles are amazing. They smell so beautiful. And I pulled some out to show you how I finished yes. if we have time. Yes, yes. And I, so I always, whenever I have questions about like candle rituals or like, I actually, I don't, I'm not too familiar with tal talismans. Is that how you say it? Yeah. <laughs> talismans um, and how exactly, I feel like I'm doing it wrong whenever I'm like 
coming up with like, okay, what do I do? Um, but I would love for you to share with our community your favorite manifesting ritual and how you prepare kind of the energy behind it, what you do and, um, you know, just kind of explain it for those yeah. that might not know. Cool. Um, I will say, you know, for me, people, when you're talking about spirituality or you're talking about connection, like so many people have so many labels and so many ideas. And so for me, I would say I'm not super deity based. Like for me, the power is the people. Um, I still say prayers that I grew up saying as a Catholic child, mm -hmm. I still chant Buddhist chants every morning. I definitely take time to, you know, look at other world religions and some of the things that they're doing. But for me, the spirit, you know, is such an important part of our creativity. It's that fire in our belly. It's the thing that, that makes us different. And so kind of caring for that wellness, our occupational wellness, our energetic wellness, our emotional, our physical, our, you know, spiritual wellness allows us to be better artists. And so I thought the first thing that I like to do, a very simple ritual, is to kind of play with oracle cards. And you can anytime, anywhere, do a one card pull. And so this is one of my favorite decks that I use a lot with clients and, and with my artists. It's the, uh, the artist's way. Oh, wow. It's Julia Cameron's The Artist Way, which is a great discipline for a makeup artist to kind of put themselves through. But so this has nothing to do with spirituality or religion. So if you have a client who maybe is a little more conservative or you're not really sure, but you want to kind of get refocused, I love this. And so I just pulled the card for you guys. And it says, as artists, we belong to an ancient and holy tribe. We are the carriers of the truth that spirit moves through us all. That's beautiful. Yeah. And so like, those are little things that I'll do, but I thought what I would do kind of is quickly kind of talk you through my morning, because I think this is a great time to start putting some of these pieces in. Oh, you got muted again. <laughs> I must keep hitting the mute thing. <laughs> muting the mouse. I'm animated. Um, I, I thought I could talk you through my morning kind of ritual and uh, rebels and outlaws is really rebels and outlaws sacred ceremonies. Um, if you look at kind of, you know, our packaging, mm -hmm. um, because I think ceremonies are a way that we can kind of put things into practice. And as artists, that is so important for us to kind of keep fostering that muse and, and, and kind of stoking the fire. And so I start each morning very similarly. Um, since COVID, because I, I, I had COVID pretty bad. So like some of these things have, have had to change. And I'll kind of talk about that as I go through. But um, I start each morning before I pick up my phone, before I do any other thing, you know, and I think about a uh, thing I'm grateful for. And I keep a gratitude journal by my bed. And because because I practice in gratitude is such an important, powerful thing. I know you spoke about it earlier. And it doesn't always need to be major. You know, sometimes those moments of gratitude might be, I'm thankful for, you know, the oatmeal that I mm -hmm. had this morning. But the nice thing about a gratitude journal is on those days where you kind of don't have anything in mind that you're grateful for, you're feeling really like uh, angry or upset or in some of those base emotions, you can look back and have the reminder of, of what you're grateful for. Then I also like to start each day with breath work and movement. And I, I try and do three to eight minutes of breath work. Um, because of COVID, I had a lot of lung issues that I'm still dealing with. And uh, so the breath work definitely helps with that. And movement, at least eight minutes of movement, even if I uh, am going to the gym or doing something physical, I will get up at that time and, and try and just get my body moving, get those kind of things ignited and still no phone in my hand, you know? Meditation is also a big part of my morning. I am a terrible meditator, but I practice it every day. Like I had this moment in the pandemic where, you know, we were locked in an apartment in New York City with COVID. So it was like, oh, what else are we gonna do? I write a lot of articles and books and, uh, I read an article and it said that not everyone has voices in their head. And I said to Jeremy, my husband, like, 
oh my God, can you believe they're like, I just read that not everybody has voices in their head. That's so crazy. And he was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I was like, you know, those voices that kind of like, when you make a decision, it says, what about this? And what about that? Yeah. I have like stage directions and camera angles and soundtrack. And he was like, I don't have that. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so what I kind of realized at that moment was, even when I'm meditating, you know, I have those voices there. So I have to give myself tools to meditate with that allow me to get into that space. And so one of the things that I'll do in the morning is I'll play with, a, uh, I'll kind of pull my candle and my crystal for the day. So law of attraction is one of my favorite. It's, it's herbaceous, it's mint, it's vetiver, it's green tea. And it's all about kind of pulling positive things in abundance. And I'll pair it with citrine and I'll have my meditation space. I'll have my gratitude journal. And then if I'm not really feeling able to focus, I might bring myself through a guided meditation. If you're someone who's really not even up to that stage of meditation, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just go to YouTube and I'll chant along with some Buddhist monks or Tina Turner. Sometimes I'll just put on my favorite song and just deep. If you haven't heard Tina Turner chant. No. Right. Oh, wait a second. Yes, I have. I have. Magical. Um, yes. yes. Oh, wow. I totally forgot about that. Wow. I'm going to look into that. And then I just kind of, from there, I kind of start my day. But even with my day, I'm thinking about how am I bringing this intention in? Little moments, right? Like I choose to put in my shower herbs and ingredients that are going to get me going for my day. So I start each day with peppermint and eucalyptus. And I am very clear that I, I say every morning, I am so grateful for the abundance of opportunity in my life as I'm like showering and doing my thing, you know? And then as I'm getting my kit ready, I'm saying, okay, well, who is this client and what is this day about? And so with uh, what I might do there is if you noticed on my Instagram, I work a lot with color. So even in my makeup designs, I might say, well, this person really, this is about passion. This is about someone needs to really pay attention to their mouth. So I'm going to bring in crimson in some way here. Uh, I might pull color cards for them. Again, not tied to any type of spirituality. So people will say, oh, James, what is my card for the day? You know, and I'll say plum overcome your challenges. And it also kind of informs my makeup, right? I'm going to work plumb into this makeup somehow. So it kind of keeps me focused and on my toes. And then on my makeup station, I'll bring in another kind of candle situation. Maybe my client needs more love in their life. Rose is all about beauty and clearing bad energy and all of those things. So I might bring Rose to set um, my potions for when I can't burn, you know, and just kind of, that's good. And just uh, bring that in. So even in my makeup application, I'm having these moments of mindfulness and my clients feel like it's curated for them. So I say, oh, I chose this candle for you, or I have this deck of cards. Do you want to choose one? Um, I've got my face chart ready. I'm laying out my station. And every piece of that is with gratitude. You know, my makeup brushes make me money. I have to treat them lovingly. You know, um, my hands, even in times of hygiene and sanitation, uh, craziness. Makeup artists were better prepared than anybody. We're always thinking about hygiene and sanitation, right? So I'll do things like, and I feel like I'm talking about my product a lot, but it's just kind of, I do what I think makeup artists need. But um, <coughs> my hand sanitizers are all made with, they're CDC compliant, but they have aloe and glycerin because we sanitize our hands so often. I wanted something conditioning, but then Mm, I use yep, the, like, it smells so good. I love it. I have and, it. Yeah, this is this is busy hands. This is one of the new ones. It's an old Italian money spell. So it's like sage and thyme and rosemary. It's like pull that money towards me. And it's very herbaceous. So it's very different than like anything you'll find at like, uh, you know, CVS or whatever. And then I, even in my brushes, you know, on set, I'm using a CDC compliant quick dry brush cleaner, but it 
has rose and sage. So as I'm like sanitizing my brush and disinfecting, I'm also bringing in this like clearing of the negative and bringing the positive. And for me, just having mind, being mindful in those moments allows me to say, okay. And then as I get through my day, then I might come home and clean my brushes and we do a, a brush soap. And this I actually formulated because, you know, Makeup Forever and Danessa Myricks and all the like super pigmented stuff was keeping, sorry, COVID lungs. You're good. <laughs> You're good. And uh, so we put together this brush uh, soap with my friend Chris, the crazy merman, and I wanted something that was vegan and that was going to deep clean a brush, but condition it, but also get rid of all of that energy. So I put a big clear quartz in the middle so that you can not only like clean your brush, you know, get rid of past pigment, but like past energy, like leave that behind and get ready. That's for so amazing. Pigment. And then I say to people every evening, I don't know, I thought every makeup artist did this. And then like, I have to shower as soon as I'm done doing makeup to get that energy off me, you know? And so I do different scrubs and these mm -hmm. are my recipes, a salt scrub, a sugar scrub and a coffee scrub. And I love the salt scrub for the end of the day for like, just rinse that energy that's kind of sticking to you down the drain so that you can be back to yourself mm -hmm. in your own element, in your own energy, in your own moments, you know, and, and can start to manifest in it. So night I might use something like an angel deck or like, this is a new favorite of mine. This is a sigil deck that I just picked up. And so I'll just pull one card or I might do a full spread of like three or five cards. And, uh, and it just kind of gives me my direction. Oh, I love it. For the next day. This one says, I follow the path with steady sureness guided by the ghosts of those who have walked it before me. Beautiful. I love that so much. Oh, I love all your products so much. And I love how like the ingredients are so intentional. Like how brilliant is it that in the little, the, the brush cleaner, you have the placement of the, the quartz crystal to yep. have that, that like the, the physical aspect. So you can kind of like kind of scrub it a little bit more. But also the properties of the crystal are also being activated, which is just, I just love it. It's amazing. Well, and, every, you know, and I think that's important, you know, now um, we've been doing some trade shows for the holidays and we just had the makeup show and people say like, oh, candles. Now I understand some of it is access. Like I love candles. So I'll go to the 99 cent store and, and get a candle. But what I try and do is, is something that, brings in the intention. And so what a lot of people don't realize is that every step of this is like touches our hands. Like we get a clear, organic, beautiful soy wax and Jeremy adds in color and fragrance. And like I meditate on the colors and I say, well, what does this color bring forward? And then we bring in the scents, but we don't work with synthetics. We work with essential oils and beautiful oils because I don't want like a synthetic fragrance. If it's intention, it needs to be the actual. And our crystals, our herbs, our florals, they're all sourced from people that we can connect to. I know where every piece of it comes from. It's not just ordered off of Amazon. My herbs, my rosemary that I'm using for the candles I'm doing today, uh, it's from a makeup artist, my friend Michelle Jack in New Jersey, who does my sage and my rosemary, because that's intentional, right? The gold, we switched over to gold because during COVID, you know, I wanted something that brought abundance and prosperity and opportunity. And these are my, some of these are my family's recipes. So it's also those like, the idea of like, how am I sharing this as a tool? for my artists to be able to not only curate something for their clients and protect their energy, but prepare their space and be in that moment. And like, so joy and success is, I, I smell them all the time, even though I make them, I'm like, this one is a uh, lemon and ginger and saffron. And then I bring in all of the herbs and the crystals to finish it. And the whole time, like people will say, okay, well, I'll, oh, here's, here's one that I did. And people will say, you know, oh, they all look so different. 
they're different because I'm making them by hand and I prepare all the crystals and the herbs and I get them all ready. But then I feel like if someone picks up this candle, for example, uh, the Amazonite is a little more prominent. That person might need help with letting go of some trauma around their heart or really focusing on self-love. The citrine, right? It's bright. It reminds you of better days. It's all about like bringing you all of the good things and, and giving you that optimism. Carnelian is for our creativity, right? It sits in that chakra. So it's all about like your sexuality, right? Your ability to connect to other people. We birth ideas. We birth creativity. So that's the kind of cre the thought that goes into me putting together a candle, just the same way I put thought into designing a makeup or creating a lipstick or putting together a, a, an event. I want whoever is bringing this home, right, to be able to have this shared big magic that we all are connected to. Artists are we hold the culture, right? And we carry it forward. So we are, as a community, very important in times of crisis. And as I have seen my artists kind of struggle in the last few years, you know, makeup is already a struggle. It's already trying to do something that people don't know, always know how to do and convincing your family that it's a real job and like all of those things. And then a pandemic gets put on top of it it's like, okay, can we just have a few moments of magic and a few moments to kind of self, give ourselves some care, the way we care for our clients and our kids and whoever else it is, our cats, you know? Yes, so. the cats that I have in my room. No, I love it. I'm like... <laughs> it's so funny. I also, low-key, I'm just like, you and I both have like the whole... The, I know, it's very the, dramatic. <laughs> I'm sorry. We, I'm a, our New England. You know, I'm odd in New. I I left New York City recently. I'm going back and forth now between Providence, where I grew up. After the pandemic, I wanted to be closer to my mom, and I forgot mm -hmm. how beautiful the light is. But it is so drastically uh, changing at this time of day. Yes, so. <laughs> same here. Um, so the last question that I have for you is what. Um, just the last words of wisdom, any last bits of advice that you have for makeup artists before, before we switch over? I think, you know, you've got to be authentic. You've got to be able to bring yourself into everything that you're doing. Uh, people will tell you all the time that it's a competitive industry. People will tell you, you know, all the time about how difficult it is. And it is. And not everybody want, shares their struggles. We hear every, about everybody's successes. Social media has skewed it so that we think that everybody is beautiful and, and wealthy all the time. And this is still a community where it can be difficult, even in the best of times, to make your money as a makeup artist. But there's also more opportunity than there has ever been. And right now we're in a period where there can really be a shift. This moon that's coming this week is, is all about, you know, getting your vision and keeping your vision and beliefs in check and during these moments of chaos. And I think that's the world. But as makeup artists, we are very fortunate because it's an industry that allows you to shape and mold your own opportunity. The title of makeup artist is malleable. I am not one of those old makeup artists that poo poos social media or influencers. I think anybody who, who is passionate about makeup and loves it and is able to make a living using it, I celebrate that. But for those of us that want to be professional makeup artists, it is so much more than just putting on a lipstick. Kevin, one of the first things he taught me when I was assisting him was anyone can put on lipstick. How are you making people feel when they sit in your chair? How are you connecting to them? What are you creating for them? And so I would say to artists, do not let go of the good memories. In times of stress and crisis, mind your memories, look backwards. Think about the magic of that moment when you chose to be 
a makeup artist, right? That was not an easy decision, but you chose it. Think about those first successes, the first time that you felt you could call yourself a professional makeup artist and know that your story is the thing that will bring you success. You cannot copy anyone else's career. You cannot, I mean, you can copy their makeup, but you won't have their opportunities because the, those aren't your opportunities. So move forward, sharing your story, educate yourself, um, be active in your community. You shouldn't take from a community if you're not giving back to it. You know, when's the last time you did something for a makeup artist? Uh, and keep yourself optimistic. Uh, this industry is so rewarding. You know, it has allowed this fat, weird kid from the smallest state in the country to live all over the world, to work all over the world, to make a living making candles and, and painting faces. Like how fortunate I am. My mom called me this morning and she was like, oh my God, you got another crazy day. I can't even believe it. You got... And I was like, how fortunate am I that I have 23 hours of work to do today? You know, how, how hashtag blessed, you know, like we are artists and that in itself is revolutionary and you have so much power uh, to empower yourself to become the artist that you want to be. You just have to put the plan in place so that you can get there and surround yourself with mentors and peers that can push you and pull you and protect you when they need to. Uh, Issa Rae says all the time, don't always look above you, but look next to you. Who are the people next to you? And are you guys in this together? And I don't know, you know, I can talk for 72 hours. So <laughs> I'm gonna- Thank you so much. Right Seriously, there. you're making us cry in the chat. <laughs> I did so do, thank you. if I have one more second. Yes, yes, real quick. I did do a special batch of joy and success candles I poured for you guys. I'm gonna finish them on the full moon. Um, there is a code if you guys want to go to the website. It's twenty five. Uh, it's twenty percent off at rebelsandoutlawsnyc.com, and I'm doing this special batch for this group. So it's our joy and success candle. It is all about bringing you bright optimism and, and that success that you want. So I'll finish one just quickly so you can see. It's yeah. <laughs> I'm going fast. You're good. You're good. What do you have the coupon code so I can add it into the banner really quick? Yeah, it's cleanse. 20, all caps, cleanse 20. Cleanse 20. So I heat the candle up. Jeremy poured these, uh, this one for me so I can show, but I'm doing for you guys a full moon batch. And then I go in with my Amazonite, protect your heart, let go of trauma, a little citrine. And these are all um, crystals that I prepared ahead of time. I use different herbs because we're doing some Colorado love today I did some yerba santa to kind of help us protect and then i add in carnelian for your creativity and then this candle is very simple i have this beautiful saffron um it's such a great herb for like those lower chakras and i just oh, wow that's beautiful ah, i'm so excited <laughs> yay Thank you. Anyway, I love you guys. I'm sorry I talked so long. But if you have any questions, you guys can always message me. Um, I'm giving you other stuff for the giveaway, even if I forgot because I'm crazy. But I, whatever <laughs> you have. Either and way, we love you. And we're so incredibly grateful. Thank you, James, for allowing time in your day for this. You're so busy. So thank you. Thank you. Everybody thank you, is just you, praising you. you, sending you all the love. And um, yeah, make sure you guys go to rebelsandoutlawsnyc.com to get that. Use Cleanse 20 for the Joy and Success candle. Is it Joy and Success, right? Yeah, yeah. Joy cool. and Success. And those are for us, specifically for us. How how amazing. That's so, oh, yeah, so you kind know what? I wasn't seeing any of the chat until now. Um, bye. <laughs> Anyway, awesome. I love you. Thank love you for doing this, Amber. You said so many nice things about me, but I see you bringing in what the industry should be and where the industry is going. And you share so much and mean so much to so many people. And I just feel so lucky to call you family and mm. so honored that you asked me to be part of this. So Thank you. Oh, God, you're going to make me cry again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Bye, you, guys. James. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. So now, wow, I'm like, I still have the chills. I'm going to cry again. Um, so excited for all of that 
amazingness that James brought to the table. Now we have another massively amazing human being, Harriet Hadfield. Oh, I'm just getting the chills. We have so many amazing people in our energy. I stumbled across Harriet back uh, at the beginning of this year. I uh, went to one of her webinars and she and I have actually a very similar story as far as like our beginning when we started our careers where we just were like in this like really, really small place. I was on a uh, an air mattress. I believe she was on something similar, just like in a really small, I remember seeing the picture. I'm like, oh my God, I can relate. And ever since then, I've been very, um, I've been very drawn to her. She has her own YouTube channel. She has an entire online platform, Harry Makes It Up. And she is just a wealth of knowledge. And it's so amazing to, to be able to see other makeup artists like James and Harry bringing all of this information to the table and sharing their knowledge and sharing their love and support. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring Harriet to the table. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Amber. And thank you, James. Oh my gosh, I was literally like preached to all the things he was saying. <laughs> yes, he is a force. He is a force. Um, so I I gave I didn't want to give all of it away because I love your story. And I think a lot of us that are a part of this community right now do know your story, but there are some that don't. So if you'd like to just briefly share how you got started in the industry and um, and then kind of like feel free to take it to the shift that you made recently with with your your online platform. Yeah, thank you, Amber. Thank you so much for having me. And like I said, what a pleasure it was to follow James. Very hard to follow. <laughs> like that was amazing. Um, yeah, so hello, everyone. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Harry, as everyone calls me. Um, so I've worked in the industry for about 15 plus years. Um, I think most people know me sort of as a celebrity makeup artist. That was definitely more of the work I was doing was kind of red carpet. However, if we go way back when, <laughs> if we go way back when, before any of that, like Amber said, um, my mum jokes I lived in a Harry Potter cupboard like I literally started my career I think it was probably back in 2004 2005 when I was actually starting to kind of backstory my first year as a makeup artist my first tax return I earned like seven thousand dollars <laughs> so I was like this isn't gonna work this isn't gonna support me this feels pretty hard and I was a yes person I said yes to absolutely everything I had that hustle mentality where I was like yeah I just gotta work harder um I was paying about 30 I was obviously back in London at this point so I was living in a room I couldn't stand up in there is picture evidence on my uh, Instagram. And I thought that was a great deal. I was like, wonderful. This is how I get to assist in London. Brilliant. Like, I, you know, I like to think I've always been able to see opportunity. <laughs> um, and there very much was a feeling of, I think, when I look back now, again, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Back then, the hardest reali realization I have now is how much my worth was attached to my work. So I very much had big goals. I was very passionate. And I always encourage ambition. But I think something I've noticed in a lot of my clients as well is it's very hard to separate your work from your worth. So it's really easy to make it about the next gig, the next client, the next paycheck, the big agent. And so, of course, for me, I had very similar goals to maybe a lot of you guys where, you know, I wanted the big agent. I wanted to move to L.A., work with A-list celebrities. And I think as those things started happening, it was very exciting, but I never felt safe. I never felt like it was enough. So even when I was working with people like Nomi Watts, even when I was starting to kind of monetize my YouTube channel, I always felt this need of, I, I say a lack of fulfillment. So there was definitely this feeling of, I kept waiting to feel like, okay, cool. I'm going to be like, it's enough now. I'm done. Like as if the goalposts would never keep getting wider. Um, and the problem was in me because I wasn't honest with myself. I think when I look back, I feel like there was a real unwillingness to be honest about what I'd let my work mean. And I forgot, like James was saying, I forgot why I started. <laughs> you know, I'd made it about what it meant, who I was working with was how I determined my worth as a person. So I was burnt out. I was very lonely. I would describe myself as a yes person. And I think just before the, well, actually, no, I think it was probably sort of like four years ago, I'd say maybe even five. It was when I was still in London. I'd started dabbling in like online marketing. I got very fascinated by the entrepreneurial world. 
And in a way, it was like, oh, that's not for me. I'm a creative. I'm not a business person. And so I can look back now at all the mind drama I had and all the lies my brain wanted to tell me, like, you can't be both. <laughs> so that's where I was. And I started dabbling with kind of course creation, things like that. And it was really successful. So I was like, oh, this could be a thing. But at the time, I was very much starting to see more and more success in my makeup artist career. So there wasn't really time for both. It was like, oh, it's a side project. And the bigger my career got in LA, um, I signed with like, quote unquote, the dream agent, the vision board things were all happening and it felt great. But I still didn't feel enough. I think that was the hardest realization of like, why am I not happy? how is it that I'm getting the things quote unquote that I meant to want? Surely that's where my happiness was going to come from. And I kept waiting. And at the same time for me, there was a lot of things in my industry I was starting to get really pissed off with. Sorry, can I curse? <laughs> I'm not sure so yeah. Yes, I say <laughs> the F word all the time. You're good. Okay, good. We're fine then. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of things that were really starting to piss me off. And I was like, um, someone needs to do something about this. Like I definitely got to that energy of whether it was that dog eat dog competition, whether it was that feeling again of people promoting hustle culture. And the worst reality for me was realizing I was even a part of it. I was promoting hustle culture by being the person that was like, oh yeah, I've got four actresses today. Yeah. Like I thought that was what made me, you know, mean I had worse. So, and, and I look back on that girl with love, <laughs> like I have a lot of love for her and like, oh bless, like, you know, I was lost and I was looking for my approval in other people. I was a people pleaser. I was a yes person. Um, so I started, I think it was about, I'm trying to think when COVID first happened now, it was probably like eight months before COVID. I had actually started working. I'd said to one of my friends, who's very big in the industry, I think I'm going to do something to help because I have all this knowledge. I've got like 16 years of experience. And I want people to have success, but I don't want to have them to have it at the cost of their health. I don't want them to have it at the cost of their sanity, their mental health. I was like, I want them to have it all and be come from a place where they feel really good about what they have and trust that success looks different for all of us. So I have some clients who don't want to move to LA. They don't want to do the big red carpet thing. They want to be the big fish in the small pond. And I love that. I love celebrating people who are really honest that their version of success is different. By the same token, I have clients who do. Maybe they want to move to New York. Maybe they want to move to London. They're in those cities and I help them achieve their goals. But it's really important to me that people I work with find their version of success and really own that and claim it. So, of course, I launched my course, I think, two months. I, I originally started with a course that was for makeup artists called Level Up. And I launched it before COVID. Uh, yeah, before COVID. And then, of course, as COVID happened, I was like, oh, and I, I was very aware that I had such a pull to this work. I felt really called to do it. And when COVID happened, it was like all of a sudden I had a choice. I was like, "This you, you've labeled this again as a side hustle, as something to dabble in. And yeah, I was like, you can go all in on this one if you want. I knew I could do both. I knew if you want to still be a makeup artist, you can do both. But as things started opening up again, I was like, oh, I'm not ready yet to like leave my baby. Like That's what it felt like. Um, and I would say from there, and, and it did end up being very successful very quickly. So I was also like, I'm getting, again, it's like that emotional tick of boxes where you're like, I feel fulfilled. I'm helping people. I'm making money. And I get to, you know, if I never pick up another brush again, I'll always be an artist. My worth is not in a label. My, t my feeling good doesn't come from what I do anymore. Um, and, you know, I've invested in a lot of coaching myself. I've done a lot of mindset work and will continue to do so. Um, but I became kind of like a full time business coach pretty much over the past year and work with one on one clients. Um, and I just love it. I love helping freelancers make more on their terms and help them find their version of freedom. Yes, I love it. And I mean, I just love it so much. You and I have such a, like, our stories are so parallel. It's kind of wild because I did the same thing during COVID. I was like, oh, I actually have time to work on this online business mm. of mine that's like, I hold so dear to my heart and it's fulfilling. Mm. That's like the word that you use. It's truly fulfilling. Yeah. Um, but I, okay. So taking it back when you were yeah. talking about, you know, just like, stuffing your, you know, time with as much work as possible, mm. right? There's a lot of artists that have just started out. So like, take what yeah. we're about to say with a grain of salt, um, or just learn from what we're about to say. I'm going to have Harry talk about burnout. And she was mm. talking about like hustle culture, um, 
how we kind of, especially like, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I mean, it what that's what you did. You, you hustled, you yeah. worked your ass I was, off. I thought that's what you had to do. I never questioned it. Same, same. And so now, especially now after COVID, almost everybody in the industry is now talking about how dangerous burnout is. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with all of the IATSE strikes going on mm -hmm. and just everything coming up to the surface about being mistreated, overworked, working too much and burnout. So yeah. Harriet's going to quickly talk about with us just the concept of burnout, how mm -hmm. you can avoid burnout, how you can get out of burnout and the mindset around it and all that. So share all the goods. Oh, thank you, Amber. Yeah, one of my favorite topics to talk about. And I think the sad reality is that most people don't know burnout until they're in it. <laughs> so most people are like, what is that? And then I'm like, oh, okay. And then they kind of, you know, we have the conversation like, yeah, I'm there. <laughs> so I think for me, the saddest thing is, is people wear or have done, should we say, I think the narrative in the creative industry, definitely being a makeup artist, has been that burnout is like a badge of honor. Like it's kind of got this notion of like, oh, if you're burnt out, then well done, you're killing it. And again, I think we've kind of forgotten how to prioritize our happiness. You know, my life for me, I want freedom. So I want a big old round life. I don't just want the work. I want time with my family. And, you know, to sum up what burnout looks like, you know, it looks different for everyone. I have some clients who they do maybe do three clients a day, but they're choosing it. It's clients they want to work with. And what I would say when it comes to preventing burnout, it's first deciding what do you want? I think so many artists are terrified to ask themselves, what do you actually want? So what do you want your day to look like? Who do you want to work with? Who is your ideal client? Who do you need to say no to? Because hustle culture for me comes from a graspy energy of I need it all. I need every single client and I'm not safe without money. I'm not safe without more clients. So I think there's a lot of mindset work we have to start with there around what you've made your work mean. And it comes back to this idea of work and worth. So I think that's one thing. I think this badge of honor as well, I know when I was assisting as a makeup artist, um, I assisted some very big people in the industry early in my career and I, I replicated what I saw. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, well, that's how it's meant to be. You're meant to kind of, you know, and, and it's funny because I came into the industry pre-social media. So I've also seen the double-edged sword of how, like what James was saying, like I don't hate on social media at all. I love social media, but that's because I don't have an attachment to what it means about me or my business. So I have a lot of playfulness with it and I, I get community from it. That's what I think is so wonderful. Um, but I think burnout first comes from saying, what do you want and what do you not want? So if you're really honest with yourself, if someone's told you you have to work on set every day for 14 hours a day and you feel you're doing it wrong until you're there, like, is that sustainable long term? And if people around you are being like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy, I'm booked every day, and are like, cool, great for them. Maybe that is their version of freedom. Maybe it is. But also, maybe they've also brought into the idea of like the badge of honor of burnout, you know, like being burnt out means you've made it. Whereas what I was aiming for, and definitely like the last few years, I think I had a big turning point, I would say like the past five years of my career, what I realized and what I now teach a lot of my clients is this idea of working less, but earning more. So getting really clear around who your ideal clients are, because saying no actually creates demand. And I think people forget that when you're saying yes to everything, you're saying no to the people you really want. And for me, burnout comes from when you're on a set where you've said yes to someone and you're on the set going, oh, she wasn't here right now. I'm so gutted. I'm, you know, there's that feeling of like resentment. And it's usually at yourself that you said yes, knowing you wanted to say no. And like you said, Amber, I know there may be some artists watching this right now who are newer, where maybe for you, taking more experiences is about finding out what you want. So it may be that you have to do a bit more dabbling, you have to do a bit more experimentation. But I, what I would say is trust your gut. I know early on in my career, I came into being a makeup artist thinking I was going to be like a fashion week makeup artist. I was like, yeah, I'm going to like do London, New York and all this. I became a celebrity makeup artist really accidentally. So in my head, I was like, that's what a real make. Again, we all have these, I, there's so much snobbery in our industry as well of like, that's what a makeup artist looks like. This is what it does. So I brought into things I'd heard around me. And I remember doing like a year of fashion week and being like, I fucking hate it. I was literally like, this is awful. I was like, I remember going to Milan. I remember going to London. Again, it was just all burnout hustle culture, crap money, back to back things like no food, you know, having to cover my own flights. And I was just like, this should have to be really fun for me to want to do it. 
And that's what I would say to you guys. When you're busy, it should be because you're doing things you want to be doing. Okay. If you're busy and burnt out and you're like, why am I doing this again? You've got to have a little chat with yourself. And I think that's the thing. Don't be afraid to check in with you and go, who said it has to be this way? You know, my biggest freedom came from realizing, and, and it was, I would say, the latter part of my career, the last kind of five years. And it was moving to LA as well. I think I'd realized my last few years of working in London, I was doing exclusively red carpet. And as I moved here, I knew that's what more of the market would be. So I kind of went with it. But I also was like, I know who I do want to work with and who I don't. And I'm okay with that. I think, you know, I had agents try and be like, this person you're an option for. Oh my God, great in with the publicist. And I'd be like, I don't want to do it. And I had to be really okay with saying no. I had to be okay with my agent being pissed off with me if that's what it took. I had to be okay with, you know, your head always wants to make it like, this could be the opportunity that changes everything. We make every one client, every one gig, the one thing that's going to make us. And I'm like, what if it's in you? What if it's not in the job? What if it's not in the client? You know, and I think for me, that was a big part of helping me undo the hustle culture was first of all, questioning, you know, people have told me things. I've picked up on narratives, but why am I not questioning it? You know, there really was an element of like, who says? And yeah. if, I get to re- if I get to rewrite my own rules, what does that look like? And it, it is funny. I find it with all my clients now. They kind of can't believe how freeing it is when they're like, I have more time for life mm-hmm. and I'm making more money. Like, it's like... <laughs> exactly. It really, yeah. So that, I, that's kind of how I would sort of dismantle it a little bit. That such beautifully said. And she painted like the perfect picture of everything I've ever personally expressed in my, um, my opinion on hustle culture, hustle culture. And you talked about kind of shifting into, uh, basically doing less for more money. Right. So that looks like raising your prices, creating a product line, something like you and I do, where we have our own platforms, like online courses and programs. So for those that might be like hearing us say, say no to the jobs yeah. and you'll, you know, raise your prices. I, I, I know the feeling of like, why would I say, I can't financially say no. So can you share the mindset reframing or reprogramming that helped you maybe when you were kind of like intimidated to make that first move um, so that anybody that's watching right now can, can hear what you would suggest for, for them feeling the same thing. Yeah, that's a great question, Amber. So for me, what started the catalyst, if you like, was first of all, asking myself the questions that I'd never dared to question. It was kind of, and for me, a lot of that was doing work around money, my beliefs around money. I really had to dismantle the idea of like safety and money being the same thing, because yes, there is freedom in having money. I believe that for me, more money is more choices, it's more options, it's being able to give to courses I care about, it's able to do work on a bigger scale that I want to do. But it's also not my everything, like it's one part of the pie. So if you think of it like a pie, <laughs> we all love pie. So I'm just like, you know, we have to think about where, what are the stories you heard about money growing up? And again, you know, I know for me, when I first started saying no to jobs, I actually was like, I feel lazy. Like that was one of the things that shook me. I was like, oh, I feel guilty because I'm saying no to money. And yet in my head, I was like, but if you keep saying yes, you keep getting booked at this lower rate. And again, for anyone who's really new, your rates are always going to be increasing as your demand increases. So again, this is going to be relevant to different people depending on what level you're at. But if you are just starting out, I think it's still important that when people want to take the piss and are like, not going to be happy until it's free, unless there's a benefit to to you energetically in doing it, it's okay to say no, okay? Yes, you may do things for experience. Yes, you may do things for contact. There are different ways we get paid other than money. There are energetic benefits to doing work, which I st- even at the end, I was still doing new actresses that were gonna have a big Netflix show for $250 because they had a huge publicist, even though my day rate was a lot more than that. But there was an energetic of, oh, I wanna work with this person. I wanna work with that publicist. But it was a choice. And I think if you tell yourself you have no choice and if your energy around money is very, I need it, it's graspy. The reality is, I would say to my clients, like if you put the problem in the middle of a page, okay. so if your problem is I need money, first of all, is that a problem? I'm always very like, is it a problem? And then you think about all the solutions. So you just do a a brain dump of all the solutions. You don't have to like all the solutions. But what helped me was like, 
I could get a business loan. I could get a credit card. I could go work in Starbucks alongside. You know, and it's funny because each time I thought of a solution, my ego would be like, no one could know you worked at Starbucks if you did. You know, like my brain wanted to be like, no. <laughs> so it's so funny how when you become really aware of like your brain's narrative of, again, what people will think of you, how it will look, your brain wants to be like, this is the only option. You have to say yes. Whereas I, and you know, and I've seen it time and time again. I saw people in the industry that even when I was working at a really top level, there were people in my agency, people like, you know, Patrick Tarr, who kind of like came out of nowhere. Like he hadn't assisted loads of people and been in the industry years and years and years. He kind of came out of nowhere. And I think people forget that there are some people that just have the mindset, like, why not me? What am I waiting for? Why do I feel like I have to assist for 10 years and work for free forever? So for me, I think it does start with your money story. What have you made money mean to you? Like my favorite, you know, think about what your parents said as kids. One of my favorite things is when people say money doesn't grow on trees. And yeah, I'm like, but trees are made of paper and paper is money. <laughs> money is printed on paper. So I'm like, well, it kind of does. So think about what you heard growing up and you have to be willing to question what you have made money mean. And I think for me, the most freeing realization, even before I was doing passive income products was, and, and the products I now sell and coaching and everything was that I know how to sell myself. And I feel really good about selling. Like selling to me is not icky. I believe people need my service. So it's not just money. It's how you feel about promoting yourself. It's how you feel about negotiating. And I think for me, I had to really undo all of the thoughts I had around selling because yes we're creatives but you are business owners as well guys like I want that you get to be both okay you really do get to be both so I think for me that was a huge part of it and accepting well if I'm going to do it my way what does that look like and the most freeing thought I'll share with you that changed the game for me was I am not in a rush like that for me that thought alone was like a mantra so stepping out of hustle culture whenever there was an opportunity presented where I was like should I, shouldn't I, I would be like, does this feel like I'm operating out of freedom or fear? Like that thought for me is how I make majority of my business decisions now. Wow, so the mantra that you say on a daily basis is- I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. In a rush. Ooh, I like that one. That yeah. one's really good because time is such a, it's so relative and it's such a, an illusion, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, why are we in a rush to do all of these things, right? And thank yeah. you so much, by the way, for- um, speaking to both of the yeah. audiences, the ones that are, you know, five, yeah. 10, 15 years in, but also those that are new, because it is a little bit of a different yeah. um, experience. And I love mm -hmm. that you said that there's an energetic exchange, because that's what I teach as well, is mm -hmm. if you're doing, you know, a test shoot, like my portfolio 95% of it is test shoots and I wasn't paid for most of them, but I get so much work from that. So energetically, I've gotten a lot of money in, you know, <coughs> yeah. from doing that. So, um, mm -hmm. but I love that the whole mindset shift of you don't have to say yes to everything, you know, and, and even spending money. I think even spending money to make money. I think that's something my clients always find funny. Like one of my friends who's a really huge photographer, she works, she does all the rare beauty campaigns. She does GHD, she does Orbe, like or loads of these big beauty brands. And she will still, even before she was making those big money days, I remember having a conversation about what investing in you and your business looks like. And she was like, I will still spend $7,000 creating a shoot in a studio to attract the clients I want because I know who I want to work with. And I know that $7,000 will turn into $70,000. And even when she was only making $500 a month or $1,000 a month, she was like, I would pay $70 to buy a Colorama in my garage. So it's always going to look different depending on where you are. But again, it's your mindset. Do you see yourself, whether it's investing in something like this, whether it's investing in a coach, whether it's investing in a studio, do you believe, do you trust yourself to see a return of investment? Yeah. Oh, that's, I like that. That's mm. a really great quote. Do you trust mm. yourself to make the investment and that it's going yeah. to come back like threefold or tenfold or whatever you yeah set out. So um, I know, so if, I know that you have to get going soon. So I want to talk about really quick before you have to leave um, about your, your uh, masterclass that you just did. So she is gifting you guys access to that. So it is on that landing page that I gave to you guys in the Facebook group. So she's talking about how she created consistent 10 K months. So if you want to just give us a little 
yeah. a little like a sneak peek and share exactly what they're going to learn in that masterclass so they can go sign up. Amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Amber. Yeah. So for everyone who is here with Amber today, this training has actually kind of already finished and it's not, you can't find it anywhere. So you guys are getting like the very last sneak peek. It'll be a limited time um, that it's available for as well. And then it will disappear. But I want I did a training recently on how I created consistent 10 K months, because I think consistency and consistent income is something that feels so elusive to freelancers, but there's a catch. This training is about doing it without hustle culture in a way that wins back your time and in a way that is attracting what I like to call premium clients. And everyone has a different idea what premium looks like, but to me, it just means people that love to pay you. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what price range you're selling at. For me, I believe in teaching freelancers, especially how to make more without the hustle and without that kind of graspy energy and in a way that you feel really good selling your service. So you come from a place of like, people are lucky to work with me. Like, that's what I want for all of you when you leave this. If you do my training is to come away being like, oh my God, my clients are so friggin' lucky to work with me. <laughs> yes, I love that. So definitely go sign up. Um, and as we close this, I want you guys to go sign up for that. Go follow her if you are already or not. She just released a new podcast and it's called Freelancing yes. with Freedom. Freelance with Freedom, yes. Free so we have a new, we have two episodes out already. Um, and the first one is called Getting Dropped by My Hollywood Agents. So yes. And it is everything we talked I about. Listen today. to it. Yes, I listened to it, girls, <laughs> guys. It's a really, it's really cool that she's sharing that experience and wow and you were so vulnerable about like the experience of um exactly like the feelings behind your kind of like uh, your definition of winning success competition mm. things like that and being competitive with yourself and always wanting more and more and more so she it's a really brilliant podcast she's really honest and transparent so i definitely suggest i haven't listened to the second one but i listened to the first one and it's amazing um so that is all that we have with harry thank you so much for being with us thank, thank you, you so for much having me <laughs> yeah of course and um yeah you guys definitely make sure you say hi to harry and yeah. uh thank her for for spending time with us because I know she's a busy woman as well. Oh no, thank you so much for having me, Amber. It was such an honor and I love the work you do. And again, it's just nice seeing more. I think the best thing for me that has come out of, especially post COVID is just how many artists are like, it doesn't have to be the way we've been told it is. We don't have to be in this dog eat dog world. We can all support each other, promote each other. And the pool of success is not a tiny thing that runs out each time someone else is successful. There is room for all of us. So um, love what you do. And anyone who wants to follow me, I am at HMIU Academy on Instagram. Come say hi there. Let me know if you came from seeing this training and um, we'll chat in the DMs. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Harry. We'll see you Thank later. You me, You're Bye. welcome. Bye. Awesome. Oh, she is such, uh, I, I am obsessed with accents, so I could literally listen to her talk all day. <laughs> Um, so you guys make sure that you take advantage of that masterclass. It's only going to be up for a limited time. Um, so it's going to be on that landing page. It's, uh, inside the Facebook group. And I will be emailing that to those that are watching on YouTube, uh, YouTube. So, um, oh, hi Kitty. She was, um, taking a nap for a while, but now she's like, I'm done. Okay. So to finish out our bonus day, I have one more mini training for you guys all about, making money during the holidays. So the holidays are always a fun time, right? I'm obsessed with Christmas. So like I've been listening to my Christmas playlist since November 1st. Um, so I'm obsessed with the holidays. And I know, you know, when we want to like really focus on our freelance and those of you that want to break into the TV film or you're already working in the television and film industry, the fashion industry, so on and so forth. Um, sometimes, especially towards like the last two weeks of December and into like that first week of January, it gets slow for us, but like sometimes it's a blessing. Um, <laughs> cause a lot of the times in the production world, the productions are trying to fit in all of the stuff right before that, like Christmas holiday break, right. And uh, new year break. So, um, with that said, for those of you that aren't, you know, fully like being like super full-time booked with the production world. I have five ideas for you guys to generate income for the holiday season. Thanksgiving's next week. So we're already like, we're in it, right? So first, first thing that you guys can do, that is like, I think every single one of us, if you are not fully booked free in your freelance world, like in your freelance career, 
offering virtual classes. But, okay, COVID, terrible, scary, you know, bad, bad times, right? However, what did come from the lockdowns and the pandemic is the sense of the virtual world. Uh, the amount of people that are doing online courses, virtual classes, anything that would like boot camps, challenges where we're coming together and experiencing something virtually all together. Virtual makeup lessons, just, you know, there was a lot of artists that I personally know that made a decent income during COVID because they were doing online one-on-one -on -one virtual makeup lessons. Now, take it a bit further. So you can offer virtual lessons for holiday pricing, however you, that looks like for you. You can do packages. You can do an hourly rate. You can do a you know flat rate, whatever you want to do. It can be any type of look that you want. And you just allow people to pay you for your time to learn how to do their makeup for the holidays. Um, like I said, I know a lot of you guys kind of already do this. A lot of artists did this during the lockdowns and it kind of like fizzled out. And it's only because like we all started going back to work in the physical, like we're like leaving and going doing makeup on people, but virtual classes for holiday, it's still a thing. So don't discount that. The best way to promote that is what we did yesterday, which is promoting your services on your Instagram, promoting, hey, I'm starting to do virtual classes for the holidays. If you want me to share how you can do your makeup, like tips and tricks and everything like that, for you to look absolutely amazing at, you know, your Thanksgiving gathering, your Christmas gathering, the Hanukkah gathering, your um, any other holidays that go under the umbrella of, you know, um, this particular holiday season, New Year looks, all of the above. Um, some people might even be getting uh, engaged or married during this time. So that goes in that same umbrella. I feel like it's very, there's a lot of people that get engaged on Christmas day, Christmas Eve and new year's Eve and new year's day. So that is something too. You can just like continue promote. Now here's the thing. It's not a situation that you're going to post one time. This goes for, this is not just for the virtual classes I'm talking about. This is for anything, but if you want to offer virtual classes or offer that you have times available, it's not just, I'm going to post it once and whatever. There is a, and I totally forgot to say this yesterday, or I'm sorry, on day two. In the marketing world, like truly, like we're talking business marketing, like corporate advertising. There is a saying that says somebody has to see or be sold to seven times before they actually buy or do something. And it's literally, it's just human psychology. Remember what I was talking about with McDonald's? Their billboards are literally everywhere. And the reason why is because they understand that concept that the human brain has to see McDonald's at least seven times, most likely, before they make that decision to go get McDonald's. Okay. Same thing with our services. When I was raising money for my documentary through Indiegogo, that was like, I had a, um, one of those, like, they're like coaches, if you will, that are like, they can help you with raising the money. She shared with me, like, you have to, it's between seven and 13 times remind people to donate the money because what happens is, Hey, so-and-so I have the service. Do you, do you, are you like in need of it? And they're like, you know what? Yeah, I am. But then they have a life too. They get distracted are just like our um, attention spans are dwindling every single day. And it's just because we're all on our phones. So you have to remind people consistently. So if you want to offer something like virtual classes, post it out there and post it the next day, post it, get on Instagram stories, talk about it and do it at least seven times before you give up, before you say like, oh my gosh, like nobody wants my services. Trust me when I say I have felt that too. I offer one-on-one -on -one Reiki sessions and I post about the fact like, hey, I have some availability if anybody wants a Reiki session and crickets. And sometimes I get in my head like, oh my God, nobody wants my services. And then I'll remind, like, I'll be like, oh, you know, I'll post it again. And then somebody will be like, oh my gosh, I meant to message you the other day. I, I totally forgot, but thank you for reposting this. So you have to remind people, people are humans. It has nothing to do with you. It's nothing personal, okay? It's just the way that humans 
our brains work. Okay. All right. Moving on to number two at home parties. Now with, with COVID, depending on exactly where you're at, this one, you just want to, you want to take, um, what you want to take it with care, take it with caution. Right. Um, I'm, you know, on set working in productions. And so productions are very, uh, sanitary, clean COVID friendly. So if you do at home parties, just make sure that you are being sanitary COVID friendly. You are, you know, um, safe and all that kind of stuff. All right. So, but the thing with at home parties that I love so, so much, and it just stinks that like, you know, the pandemic had to like ruin things like this in the sense where we can't go all out the way that we used to, but we'll get there. We'll get that. We'll get back to where we were. You know, I have faith, but at home parties are so much fun. You guys kind of like heard me say to James earlier about the body shop. So the body shop they used to have like one of those at home. Um, they did like, what is it called? The, uh, where like, it's like a, um, um, like a MLM type of thing. And I had so much fun with that. That was the first experience that I had being a working makeup artist. So basically what I would do is I would get a bunch of people together and I would share the products with them and then I would sell the products. And I took that a step further and this was when I was still in Indiana where I was like, I want to make money as a makeup artist. I want to be paid to do what I am good at. And I, you guys, like I said, I was just starting. So I wasn't like this grand, amazing makeup artist. I didn't have a ton of experience, but I put together at home parties like all the time. It was so much fun for me. And so I started, I got so creative with it. I, um, there was one party that I did where it was, I would share everybody how to do a, a day to night look, but there was like a door fee. So like they had to pay five bucks to like attend or something like that. And there would be a raffle and it was a dollar per ticket. So for those that wanted to like enter for a raffle, you can make money off of that. And then you could also sell, um, sell products. Now, here's the thing with selling products. Um, you can get, you know, with like an MLM, totally up to you, the, the direct sales companies, um, where you do something like this and then whatever you're sharing with your guests, they can, you know, buy directly from you and then you get a commission or, you know, you could go into the route of having your products. And then say, for instance, you are using like Stila, you're using, um, I don't know, uh, what else do I even like urban decay? I'm totally spacing on brands right now. And that's kind of embarrassing because there's a million that I could be saying Bobby Brown, whatever. Um, you can reach out to these brands and ask if they have affiliate programs. Okay. And then what you do at these, you know, these at home parties is you share what you're already using in your kit. You're, you know, you know, educating about these products. And then you can just like create a link or something like that, that has all of the, um, links that go directly to the websites for them to purchase the, the products that they want with your affiliate link. And then you can get commission off of that. Um, or take a step further. If you do, um, have like a business license and you can reach out to brands where you're actually selling them wholesale, you can do orders that way as well. So just a several ways that you can make money at home parties are like, I love them. And right now the holidays, like you guys can get into like corporate parties too, like get a bunch of people together for everybody to either get their makeup done, uh, education on how to do their makeup, whatever. There's like so many creative ways that you can do that. Okay. Uh, the next way is holiday, um, photos. So this is something that I would suggest creating a post on your Instagram or your Facebook and then boosting. So create, make sure that your Instagram account is on creator mode or business mode and that you have an ads account set up with Facebook so that you, they can charge you to promote. And basically when you boost the ad, I'm sorry, boost the post, you pay for more people to see that post and you can create a very specific demographic. If you're, you know, in a very specific area, like for instance, I would choose, like say I'm doing, um, 
I don't know, men's grooming for your holiday party or something like that. I could create a photo on my Instagram account, my personal one, and then I would boost it and I would choose men that are in the Denver, Colorado area um, of a certain demographic uh, with certain keywords and all that kind of stuff. And it will boost that post in front of your ideal client that you are trying to book with in the location that you are in. And the cool thing is you can like, you can promote it on any way. Remember, I was just saying about the the uh, corporate stuff. You can reach out to corporate companies because they do corporate photos and they do holiday photos, like believe it or not, um, and they pay a lot of money. So you can, you know, uh, you can reach out to them like individually. You can like connect with them on social media. You can send them an email with the offers that you have, or you can boost that post and essentially offer your services for holiday photos, holiday parties, uh, holiday events, all of that good stuff. And especially with New Year's, that's probably a, a really, really big one. Um, and, and to be honest, like if you, I, I highly suggest creating packages for Black Friday and or just like holiday packages. Don't, I wouldn't necessarily like discount your individual prices because you don't want, I don't really, um, I no longer really am a fan of discounting your rates unless you start your rates really high and you discount them to like the rate that you want to be at. That's kind of, it's a, it's a marketing thing. It's, you know, corporate companies do this all the time, but anyways, creating packages so that that ticket price for you is a lot higher and you're not um, you're not losing money because you're it's, it's a bigger package kind of like with the bridal industry it's it's really lucrative to have bridal packages rather than like individual prices and people asking for discounts or whatever um, so create holiday packages create a Black Friday package and promote that okay now the next one is like um, I I don't want to say cringe, cringeworthy, but like, just hear me out. Seasonal retail. Now, I personally don't like retail at all. I'm like, Harriet was just saying that she's really good with selling. Y'all, I can't. I am terrible with selling. I used to work uh, for like a bunch of um, brands as like freelancer, like a freelance. They, so like makeup brands, they hire freelance artists to like travel to different locations of like Ulta's, Sephora's uh, Macy's, so on and so forth to represent their brand and sell. And I'll just put it this way. I never hit, I never hit the minimums that we are supposed to, but if you are really great with people, if you are really, you know, especially those of you that are really just starting retail is a really, really great way for you just to be in it, have people sit in that chair and show them really fun makeup and makeup looks and tests and stuff like that. Um, so with seasonal retail, you guys, because we had 2020 and everything went like, woo, like just like underground, right? This year, it's like catch up. Like we are catching up with that, <laughs> with what happened last year. And I'm not even kidding you. Every single store I have gone to, like everywhere, uh, there's a, a we're hiring sign. So we places are hiring left and right. So I have faith that you guys can get a job literally today. If you walked in a place, gave your application and started working just seasonally, right? So if you are in a period of time right now that you are slower, um, and you do need some extra money, retail for holiday is, um, very much an option that I, I definitely think that it's a, it's definitely not something to forget about or discount. All right. And the fifth and final one is create something to sell. So if you guys noticed every single one of the four artists that I brought onto this boot camp, they all have something else that they do aside from their freelance career. Let me, I'll, I'll bring you in on a little bit of a secret. Freelancing is amazing, but it does get taxing on the body when you're working so much for so many hours and so on and so forth. That's what all of us have literally talked about. Every single one of us where we're just working, 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 working. It's this hustle thing. So those of you that are my, like maybe haven't gotten to that point yet, 
you you might not necessarily like connect with that just because you haven't experienced it yourself and you're like oh my god like i would die to be there like i would love to experience that and be overwhelmed because i'm working so much um and i remember being at that point too being like oh my god i would just do anything to be that busy we are all, all here to share with you to avoid that you know avoid that burnout before it happens because you guys it is very dangerous it sent me in the hospital i haven't shared with you my story um just because we have not had enough time to share that it's a very long story there's a whole entire podcast episode that i have recorded and released for you guys so if you want to hear that story um i am very open about what happened with me and um what literally like drove me to the ground and, and it shifted everything for me. So feel free to listen to that if you're really interested in that. Um, and so I, it's like me really, I, not only am I promoting you guys to like, uh, like avoid burnout, but the other artists that I brought are also reminding you to do the same. Now, like I said, every single one of them has another stream of income. And if you're like, James, you've got like 15 streams of income, which is amazing. We as makeup artists, in order for us to be able to thrive and have true balance where we're doing what we love and saying yes to the jobs that we feel really good about and not having to say yes to everything because financially we have to, um, having the balance of having the time with your family, having the time to travel. You guys, just so you guys know, I didn't, this past September was my first vacation I had ever taken in the 13 years I have worked as a makeup artist, 13 years. And I haven't taken a vacation. Now, when I like put this out there that I have gone back home to Indiana to visit, um, during periods of times like the holidays and a couple times during, you know, a few summers. But that to me is not a vacation. It's going and visiting family. Like I'm saying like going on vacation where you're literally like disconnected, you're with a cool, fun group of people or your significant other or by yourself or your best friends, whatever. And you're just having an experience with no, nowhere to be, no, um, like any of that, right? A true vacation that I've, finally experienced that for the first time in 13 years back in September. It's very much needed. <laughs> um, so um, where was I going with this? Oh, so having some sort of other option for you, another stream of income aside from the freelance that you guys all are here to, to pursue is highly, I highly suggest it. Highly, highly, highly suggest it. Okay. I, personally am a firm supporter in online courses, online programs. Every single one of you have something that you could share. It doesn't necessarily have to be about makeup. So don't think so like linearly, like you can branch out if there's something else, like say for instance, you are a genius when it comes to crystals, you know, create a course about crystals and maybe you can integrate it like in the makeup community or you don't have to at all. You can just make it very like open to anybody. Um, James, he and his partner created Rebels and Outlaws. It's all, it, it, it's products. And yes, they integrate it into the makeup industry, but you don't have to be a makeup artist to buy their products, right? Create candles. You can create jewelry, create an, you know, start an Etsy. Um, you can do, uh, you can offer coaching programs if you feel like there is a subject that you feel really good about coaching other people on. There's a lot of things that you, that we can do. So that is the fifth one that I suggest you guys do. If you are looking to make more money during the holidays, just put it out there. You know, uh, like I said, one of our inner circle members, she just released her online membership and, um, so she's, she's creating monthly income. I created a monthly membership. So I generate passively every single month money through this membership. And I do online courses as well. Um, the other thing that I didn't even add on here is like affiliate marketing. I don't want to get too into it, but find brands like write down today some of the brands that you use the most on your makeups. Like whatever you use consistently every single time, almost at least like 97% of the time. Write it down and reach out to that brand and ask if they can, if you can create uh, an affiliate link with them. Chances are they are not going to say no to you possibly making them money. <laughs> they are a brand and 
you know, companies love making money. So uh, they're not going to say no is my point. Um, and then the cool thing about that is once you generate a really good relationship and build trust with that brand and they see your sales, they're going to offer you a, a sponsorship deal and a contract. You know, it happens. So that is everything that I have for you guys uh, as far as tips for the holidays of, you know, tips on making money for the holidays. Um, yes, Vivian says burnout is de debilitating. It really is. Um, like I said, I got, it sent me to the hospital and I took an entire month off, an entire month off in September um, because it was, it was um, really bad. <laughs> To say the least, like I said, go listen to the podcast. You'll hear everything. Um, so anyways, that is all I have for you guys. I'm just going to double check the, the chat before I bid you all farewell. Awesome. Thank you, Veronica. Veronica says that was such a great training. Hi, highly recommended. Awesome. Oh, she, she, Veronica's talking about uh, Harriet's training. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, you guys. So that is it. Like I said before, the replays of this boot camp, the three days plus this bonus video, will be up for the next week. Um, I want to remind you that the inner circle, the doors for the inner circle are open. They're going to be open until November 18th. So it's for a, a, only a period of time. Okay. And the price right now is $29 a month. And essentially what you get with that $29 a month is you get access to all of our previous masterclasses, which is insane. Like, think about this. It is 13 or more. I think it's like 14 or 15 masterclasses for only $29 a month. Okay. Like wrap your head around that. Okay. Um, and they, there's everything from set etiquette 101, manifesting with crystals. Right now we have a 21 days of Reiki masterclass that we're currently in the middle of. Um, men's grooming, we've got negotiating. There's all of these masterclasses that I've created for you. And we also bring in guest experts. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of knowledge and content for you guys that currently exist that you get immediate access to. And then Every other month, there is a new masterclass. And I have you, y'all, the Inner Circle members, just so you guys know, for those of you that are currently with me right now that are in the, the Inner Circle right now, you all are in for a real treat for next year because we have the entire year mapped out with all of the upcoming classes. And holy moly, 2022 is about to be, oh my God, I like, wow, the, the classes that we have prepared for you are insane. Just going to put that out there. Um, so. That is what you get. And then we do monthly goal setting sessions, monthly mentorship sessions, and monthly accountability calls. And basically our entire goal with myself and my team is for you to be successful and supported. So the other makeup artists that are already currently members, all of them, we're all like-minded. We're all very supportive and caring and just we just love the energy that we all bring to the table um so that's another really really big thing too um but for those of you that want to do the annual membership you get everything that i just said plus the um the what was i gonna what was the the four-week program for and that's like 267 and then the men's grooming course so just so you guys know the difference between the men's grooming course inside the inner circle versus what you're going to get with the upgrade i'm sorry the annual membership um there are updates with the the men's grooming course that are about to happen and they're really big updates but unfortunately the inner circle members do not get that upgrade so the annual membership people get the course like access to the course itself like it's a standalone course okay and then you get a one on one reiki a distant reiki session with me all right so that in and of itself all totals to be over $700 worth of product if you were to pay individually for that, but it's only $288. So you're getting a massive, massive discount with that. All right. And um, just to, we're like, just to like put this out there, those of you that want to do the monthly option, you have the ability to pause at any time if you need to. So just throwing that out there. 
Veronica says, Amber, I can relate so much, girl. Thank you so much for the last three days. I am so inspired and feel so mo motivated to make changes in my life and career. Yes. Thank you. I'm so glad that you enjoyed this boot camp and that it helped motivate you and get you back on track. I feel like a lot of you guys have mentioned that. And that's exactly what, we, like, why I create these, these boot camps is because right now, more than ever, we all need. We all need that, you know, and um, that support and that motivation and inspiration. So I am honored to be able to have facilitated this for you guys. Um, and Vivian says, yeah, I can't wait. So Vivian is now a Inner Circle member. So she is going to be experiencing everything I just shared with you guys. Um, so, yes, that is it, you guys. If you have any questions at all about the Inner Circle, please reach out to me with anything you have. You have until November 18th to sign up. Um, but once November 18th at midnight happens, we end up shutting the doors to the, um, the, the, that pricing that I'm sharing with you guys. And it does go up. Okay. We, we raise the price every single, um, after every single launch that we, that we put together. Um, and it's just because the content just keeps getting, or like the, yeah, the content and the value just keeps getting greater and greater and greater. That, that is why we increase the price every, every single launch that we do. Okay. And then you get locked in at that price. So just because you're getting in at $29 right now, and then next time it's going to be 33 or whatever we, you know, up it to, um, you, you're not going to get the, the 33, you'll stay at 29. And like I said, you have the ability to pause at any time and cancel at any time. So it's completely, you know, like, whatever you want it to be. We understand that shit happens. <laughs> now, if you're on the annual membership, then you get it for the entire year. Vivian says, we need each other now more than ever. We really do sending love and light to all members and all artists who have shared our time, shared their time and knowledge with all of us. So grateful. Yes, I echo that. Thank you for saying that, Vivian. I ditto. All right, you guys. Well, thank you again for spending this last weekend and couple of days with me. Um, I am in awe of every single one of you that signed up and did the, the work and have, you know, listened to me babble for the last three, three days <laughs> for a couple hours each day. Um, I am always, you know, reachable if you ever have questions, um, or concerns or anything like that. And, um, I am just honored to be putting this together for you. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, cheers to you and your success. It means the world to me. So please keep in touch with me if you don't end up in the inner circle. I love hearing from you guys. I love seeing your, you know, just your expansion and you, your success journeys and everything like that. All right. Yes, you're welcome. You're very welcome, you guys. All right. I love you all. Sending you all of the love and light and opening all those doors for your success. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye.